In this lesson, we will revise probability and introduce you to some new words. Let's begin with the experiment of rolling a die. There are six possible outcomes in this experiment. In other words, you can get a number from 1 to 6 when rolling a die. We call all possible outcomes in an experiment the sample space, or S for short. We write n bracket s equals 6 to indicate that there are 6 possible outcomes in the sample space. We can also define specific events in an experiment. For example, we could define event A as even numbers. The outcomes in event A are therefore 2, 4 or 6. From this, we can easily find the value of n bracket A. It is equal to 3 because there are 3 outcomes in this event. Event B is defined to be the odd numbers. How many outcomes are there in this event? 1, 3 and 5 are the outcomes, so n bracket B is equal to 3. Event C is defined to be numbers bigger than 4. There are 2 numbers that are bigger than 4. So n bracket c is equal to 2. Event d is defined to be numbers smaller than 3. There are again only two outcomes in this event. So n bracket d is also equal to 2. Event e is defined to be numbers smaller than 5. There are four outcomes in this event. So n bracket e is equal to 4. Event F is defined to be numbers smaller than 7. There are 6 outcomes in this event, so n bracket F is equal to 6. Event G is defined to be numbers bigger than 6. And because there are no numbers bigger than 6 on a die, n bracket G is equal to 0. Let's use this information to answer a few typical questions. Here is the first question. What is the probability that event A will happen? In other words, what is the chance of getting an even number when you roll a die? In short, we can write this as P bracket A. There are three numbers in event A, and altogether there are six numbers. The probability of getting an even number is therefore 3 out of 6. The 3 comes from the fact that n bracket A is equal to 3. And the 6 comes from the fact that n bracket S is equal to 6. So to find P bracket A, we have actually divided n bracket A by n bracket S. This formula is used to calculate the probability of any event A. Please note, we normally simplify our answers when calculating probabilities which we can also write as 0, 0,5 or even as 50%. These are just three different ways of saying the same thing. Please pause the lesson if you need more time here. Let's calculate the probability of getting an odd number when rolling a die. The formula tells us that we need to divide n bracket b by n bracket s. n bracket b equals 3 and n bracket s equals 6. The probability of event b happening is again 3 out of 6, or 1 half. What is the probability of getting a number smaller than 3 when rolling a die? To calculate this, we need to divide n bracket d by n bracket s. n bracket d equals 2 and n bracket s equals 6. The probability is therefore 2 out of 6, or 1 third. What is the chance of getting a number smaller than 5? To calculate this, we need to divide n bracket e by n bracket s. n bracket e equals 4, and n bracket s equals 6. The probability is therefore 4 out of 6, or 2 thirds. 
What is the probability of getting a number smaller than 7? Using the formula, this is 6 out of 6, which is equal to 1. An answer of 1 means that the event is certain to happen. You will definitely get a number smaller than 7 when you roll a die. And what about the probability of getting a number bigger than 6? Using the formula, this gives an answer of 0 over 6. This is equal to 0. An answer of 0 means that the event is impossible. You will never get a number bigger than 6 when you roll a die. Let's recap. When calculating probabilities, the smallest answer you can get is 0 and the biggest is 1. Most of the answers are fractions between 0 and 1. These can also be written as decimal fractions or as percentages. Please pause the lesson if you need more time here. Let's now have a look at two events at the same time. And let's begin with events A and B. This is what the events look like in our diagram, which is also called a Venn diagram. This clearly shows that events A and B do not overlap each other. We say that events A and B are mutually exclusive events. This is because a number cannot be even and odd at the same time. And because all numbers on a die are either even or odd, there are no numbers that lie outside A and B. When this is the case, we say that A is the complement of B. When events are complementary, then the sum of their probabilities will always be equal to 1. In this case, we have 1 half plus 1 half, which is definitely equal to 1. We can therefore state that the probability of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of b. This is another important formula to remember if a and b are complementary events. The event b is also sometimes called not a. This is because an odd number is a number that is not even. Please pause the lesson if you need more time here. Let's now investigate the two events c and d. This is how the two events look in our Venn diagram. Are C and D mutually exclusive events? Yes, because the two events do not overlap each other. In other words, a number cannot be smaller than 3 and bigger than 4. Are C and D complementary events? Looking at the Venn diagram, we see that there are two outcomes that lie outside C and D. This means that C and D are not complementary events. Or you can use the fact that the sum of their probabilities is not 1. Please pause the lesson if you need more time here. Let's now investigate events A and E. This is how the events look in our Venn diagram. Are A and E mutually exclusive events? Definitely not, because they overlap each other. In other words, they are common outcomes. We say that A and E are inclusive events, which also means that A and E can never be complementary. Please pause the lesson if you need to. Without looking, one ball is taken out of a bag containing red and yellow balls. Are picking a red ball and picking a yellow ball mutually exclusive events? Yes, because a ball is either yellow or red. It cannot be both colors. In part B, we are asked whether these two events are complementary. The answer is again yes, because there are no colors other than red or yellow in the bag. In part C, we are asked to calculate the probability of picking a yellow ball if the probability of picking a red ball is 0, 0,2. To answer this, we can use the fact that these two events are complementary. We can therefore state that the probability of picking a yellow ball is equal to 1 minus the probability of picking a red ball. In other words, 1 minus 0, 0,2. The probability is therefore 0, 0,8. Please note, the probability of picking a yellow ball is the same as the probability of not picking a red ball. This is because yellow and red are complementary events. 
In part D, we are asked how many balls there are altogether if there are seven red balls in the bag. We know that the probability of red is 0, 0,2. And we are given that n bracket red is equal to 7. And we know that the formula for calculating the probability of red is the following. If we now substitute the given values, we can find the value of n bracket s, which is the total number of balls in the bag. Using a bit of algebra, we get that there are 35 balls in the bag. Please pause the lesson to check my working. Let's end the lesson with this example. Sipo has 30 mathematical shapes in a bag. If you choose 1 without looking, then P square equals 0, P triangle equals 1, P blue triangle equals 0, 1, P red triangle equals 0, 5, and P green triangle equals 0, 4. In part A, we are asked to describe what is in Sipo's bag. P square equals 0 means that this is an impossible event. In other words, there are no squares in the bag. P triangle equals 1 means that this event is certain. In other words, all the shapes in the bag are triangles. To calculate the probability of choosing a blue triangle, we can use this formula. If we rearrange it a bit, we can use it to find the number of blue triangles. To do this, we need to multiply 0, 1 by 30. This is equal to 3. We therefore have three blue triangles in the bag. We can do the same calculation to find the number of red triangles. 0, 0,5 times 30 is equal to 15. We therefore have 15 red triangles in the bag. We can again do the same calculation to find the number of green triangles. 0, 0,4 times 30 is equal to 12. We therefore have 12 green triangles in the bag. In part B, we are asked whether the events choosing a red triangle and choosing a blue triangle are mutually exclusive. The answer is yes, because a triangle cannot be blue and red at the same time. In part C, we are asked whether these two events are complementary. The answer is no, because we also have green triangles in the bag. This completes the lesson. Good luck with the test.